Hi, I am Professor Goodmanson. This video is intended for my students in my aircraft design class at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, where I currently teach. The video presents excerpts from my textbook, General Aviation Aircraft Design, Applied Methods and Procedures. Its purpose is to supplement my class lectures. The book is available online from a large number of outlets, for instance Elsevier and Amazon. It is recommended for anyone interested in the design of general aviation aircraft. This video presents two concepts of great importance to the aircraft designer, pressure and density altitude. Both are also of great importance to pilots. The student of aircraft design must be able to communicate these concepts from a mathematical and scientific standpoint. I will try to keep things here fast-paced to keep the video as short as possible. Instead, I'll point out my book for mathematical details. Furthermore, note that in this video I will express pressure in pounds per square foot as simply pounds pressure and pressure in inches mercury as simply inches. In aviation, the term altitude refers to the vertical distance between an object or a point and some reference such as sea level or ground level. In aircraft, the altitude is read using the altimeter. The altitude is most often presented using units of feet although metric altimeters also exist. This altimeter displays the altitude in units of feet. The student must be able to read the instrument with ease. The instrument features three needles. This needle indicates the altitude in ten thousands of feet. The short hand indicates altitude in thousands of feet and the long hand in hundreds of feet. Here the indicator shows an altitude of some 10,180 feet. One of the drawbacks of the altimeter is that it reacts to weather-related lows and highs. For instance, if you happen to be at sea level and are subjected to a low, the altimeter will not show zero feet, but some altitude above sea level. Similarly, if subjected to a high, the altimeter would show altitude below sea level. To put this in perspective, consider this. The lowest atmospheric pressure at sea level ever measured was 870 millibars or 25.69 inches mercury in Super Typhoon Tip in the Pacific Ocean in 1979. This altimeter would have shown an altitude of about 4,150 feet. The highest atmospheric pressure ever recorded was 1,083.8 millibars or 32 inches. The altimeter would have shown about 1,872 feet below sea level. Anyway, this inconvenience is solved by allowing the pilot to adjust the reference pressure used by the instrument. The proper reference setting is shown in this window called the Colesman window after the American mechanical engineer Paul Colesman, an expert in the design of altimeters. Here it shows 29.92 inches mercury. The setting is adjusted using the knob shown. In this context we now have to concern ourselves with five kinds of altitudes. Indicated altitude is what is shown by the altimeter in the airplane as discussed before. True altitude is the actual vertical distance between the aircraft and sea level. It is often expressed as feet or meters above mean sea level. True altitudes are typically followed by MSL, for instance 10,180 feet MSL. Absolute altitude is the vertical distance between the aircraft and ground level. Absolute altitudes are typically followed by AGL for above ground level, for instance 3,670 feet AGL. Pressure altitude. From an engineering standpoint, it is the true altitude as predicted by a pressure instrument such as an altimeter. Of course, this assumes said instrument is perfectly calibrated, so when it shows, say, 10,180 feet, this matches the true altitude above mean sea level precisely. From a pilot standpoint, pressure altitude is what the altimeter indicates when 29.92 inches mercury or 1013.25 millibars is used as a reference pressure. Density altitude is obtained by correcting the pressure altitude for deviations from standard temperature. On a standard day, pressure altitude and density altitude are one and the same. On a warm day, the density altitude is higher than the pressure altitude. Conversely, on a cold day, the density altitude is lower than the pressure altitude. Pressure altitude is required to determine density altitude. Density altitude is important because it affects engine power and thrust of typical aircraft engines. High density altitude will make the airplane behave as if it were at a higher than its true altitude. 
Takeoff and landing distances both get longer, rate of climb is reduced, not to mention airspeeds of importance are reduced. While the value of the stalling speed the pilot reads on the airspeed indicator does not change, the true airspeed at which it occurs will be higher. Thus, high density altitude will lead to a higher true airspeed given the same indicated airspeed. This means higher kinetic energy that needs to be absorbed in the event of an emergency landing, not to mention added wear and tear of brakes during normal landings. Now let's focus on the pressure altitude for just a moment. First, let's review the properties that constitute a standard day at sea level. Note that a standard day pressure using the metric system of units is 101,325 newtons per square meter. This corresponds to 1013.25 hectopascals, which is called millibars by meteorologists. In this video, the 2116 pound pressure is our baseline pressure at sea level. It equals 29.92 inches of mercury, a unit very familiar to pilots and shown earlier on the altimeter. Of course, a 2116 pounds pressure at sea level means that a column of air that is 1 by 1 foot per side and extends from sea level all the way to space weighs 2116 pounds. As soon as our altitude above the ground increases, this column gets shorter in height, so its weight is reduced and this is manifested as a pressure drop. For instance, let's assume that we're flying precisely at 30,000 feet above sea level. At that altitude, the weight of the column of air above us has dropped to 628 pounds. The pressure is 628 pounds per square foot. What is of importance here is that we are capable of estimating the pressure, temperature and density at any altitude between sea level and vacuum using the ideal gas law. If you take just one thing from this expression, it should be that knowing pressure and temperature you can always back out the density of air by transforming the equation as shown. As an example, using the standard day properties shown earlier, we can easily calculate the density at sea level. We find it amounts to 0.002378 slux per cubic foot. Using the metric system, we get 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. We can also estimate these properties at other altitudes. For altitudes below about 11 kilometers or 36,000 feet, we do this using hydrostatics and the temperature gradient or the change in temperature with altitude, also called lapse rate. The resulting expressions are shown here. More information about these equations and other aspects of atmospheric modeling is presented in chapter 16 of my book. The derivation of these equations can be found in appendix A of the book. In fact, Appendix A provides methods to calculate pressure, temperature and density from sea level to 276,000 feet or 85 kilometers. That is close to the so-called von Karman limit, generally presumed at 100 kilometers and at which atmospheric flight is no longer possible due to low density of the atmosphere. Furthermore, we can solve each of these equations for the altitude. For instance, we can solve the pressure equation for the pressure altitude yielding this expression. So, if you tell me the atmospheric pressure at your location, I can tell you what pressure altitude it corresponds to. Applying this approach to the density equation allows density altitude to be determined as well. To further our understanding, let's plot the standard air pressure from sea level to 40,000 feet. Note that the pressure is on the horizontal axis and altitude on the vertical axis. Now let's consider a different scenario. What happens if the sea level pressure at our location is not 2116 pounds pressure, but something else? What if it is, say, 50 pounds less, or 2066 pounds pressure? Well, using the previous equations, we can plot this as well, as shown here. Effectively, this shifts the baseline curve to the left. Similarly, on a day on which the sea level pressure is, say, 50 pounds greater, or 2166 pounds pressure, the baseline curve is shifted to the right. Let's consider what happens at an altitude of 30,000 feet. On a standard day, the pressure at that altitude is 628 pounds per square foot. Using the lower sea level pressure of 2,066 pounds, we would now measure 613 rather than 628 pounds pressure. And using the higher sea level pressure, we would measure 643 rather than 628 pounds pressure. But what does all of this have to do with pressure altitude? Let's look at that in more detail. 
Let's zoom in on a region near the 30,000 feet altitude and look at the low pressure curve. Again, the pressure at this altitude is 613 pounds per square foot because of a lower than standard sea level pressure. But look, if we draw a vertical line that extends upward from this point, it will intersect the baseline curve at 30,550 feet. In other words, the 613 pounds pressure we experience at 30,000 feet on that particular day would be achieved at 30,550 feet on a standard day. Therefore, we say that the 613 pounds pressure has a pressure altitude of 30,550 feet. Similarly, the high pressure value of 643 pounds pressure corresponds to a pressure altitude of 29,490 feet. The term density altitude is analogous to the pressure altitude, so if you know what one concept means, you understand the other one as well. Here I have plotted the density from sea level to 40,000 feet on a standard day using the equations shown earlier. It is vital to recognize that this curve represents the density of the standard air, which assumes a sea level pressure of 2,116 pounds per square foot. Thus, we can actually call this standard day density. Using the ideal gas law, we can also plot density for air that is, say, 30 degrees Fahrenheit colder or warmer than the standard day density. We simply do this by adding or subtracting 30 degrees Fahrenheit from whatever the temperature is supposed to be at that altitude on a standard day. By drawing vertical lines that intersect the standard day curve as we did earlier for the pressure, we see that when the temperature at 30,000 feet is 30 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than on a standard day, the density corresponds to what it is at 31,900 feet on a standard day. The density altitude is 31,900 feet. When 30 degrees Fahrenheit colder, the density altitude is 27,940 feet. Finally, let's do one example. We are flying in an aircraft equipped with a perfectly calibrated altimeter that indicates 20,000 feet with a reference setting of 29.92 inches mercury in the Colesman window. Listening to the ATIS at a nearby airport, we hear the sea level pressure in the area is 977 millibars. If the outside air temperature is 17.7 .7 degrees Fahrenheit, calculate the true altitude and density altitude. First, determine outside air temperature in degrees ranking. It is 477.37 degrees ranking. Next, determine the pressure at altitude. This can be done as follows. If the sea level pressure was 1,013.25 millibars, the airplane would be operating at a true altitude of 20,000 feet. However, the sea level pressure is 977 millibars. Using the UK system of units, this pressure corresponds to 2,040 pounds per square foot, or 28.85 inches mercury. The standard day pressure at 20,000 feet is 972.36 pounds per square foot. So, because of the 29.92 inches reference setting, the altimeter converts that pressure to 20,000 feet. However, this value is erroneous because the sea level pressure is less, or 28.85 inches. We can now convert this pressure to the true altitude using the pressure altitude equation shown earlier. It must be realized that 2,040 and not 2,116 pounds per square foot is the true reference pressure at this condition. Therefore, the true altitude is 19,128 feet and not 20,000 feet. So we are some 900 feet or so below what is indicated. This is the first of two answers. Now let's calculate the density at this altitude. The density can be determined using the ideal gas law with the known pressure and temperature. This amounts to 0.001187 slugs per cubic foot. Therefore, the density altitude is found as shown and is 21,911 feet. This example shows how it is possible to simultaneously operate the airplane at a lower true altitude than indicated by the altimeter, while the performance of the airplane would be representative of some 3,000 feet higher altitude. I hope this video has shed a little light on these mysterious concepts, pressure and density altitude. If it has helped you in some way, I hope you will consider giving it a thumbs up rating on YouTube. Thank you for watching.